Do you avoid making scene cards because it's too difficult to come up with a background? I'm going to show you how to create some easy gel press prints specifically for scene cards and I'll also do a little bit of acrylic painting today. Hey guys, it's Amber Rain Davis from NotableInk.com. Welcome back to the channel. I'm looking at Summertime Birthday from Colorado Craft Company and figuring out how I want to create my scene. I see that I'm going to need the water in the pool, the sky, and then also the pool deck for her to stand on. So I'm going to need three different areas in my gel press print. I have a five by seven gel press and I pulled this print to clean off my plate after my last session. So I'm going to use that as my base layer. I'm putting down ocean green acrylic paint from Master's Touch and that's a semi-opaque paint. And then on my base layer, is a matte acrylic paint. So we have two different finishes here. Now I peeled off some of the paint on my brayer. You can see it there. And so the edge of that paint is creating a texture on my gel plate. Now that's not what I intended. I just gave up trying to peel off the rest of the tape or the rest of the paint. And here you can see I'm trying, I've got a couple bubbles underneath my gel press and I'm just trying to push those out with the brayer. Clearly I wasn't very prepared for this session, but we're going with it anyway. And I kind of dig the texture that the brayer is putting on there. Here I have a crumpled up piece of um, deli paper. Deli paper is what you use to wrap up your sandwiches. Here's a fresh piece of deli paper. And as always, I'll have all of the supplies linked down below for you guys. I just used that to pull off some of the paint. I didn't want to completely cover up this green. Again, that's gonna be my sky up above and I wanted a different color. I wanted the color at the bottom of this to be more blue than green for the pool water. And then up in the sky, I wanted a mix of that turquoise or ocean green and then that flat paint green that we used for the base layer. I'm loving the texture that the crumpled up deli paper created at the bottom there. And you can see I have that little bit of white space at the top of the bottom, which I love. And I want to preserve that. So I just put a piece of post-it tape over that. Now here I have Naples yellow acrylic paint and I need to create the pool deck. So I thought yellow would be a nice color. Here I just have a kind of like a handmade stamp going on here. So, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, basically I just took a die and cut up some sticky back phone tape and just adhered it to a piece of chipboard and created my own stamp that way. So I was using the stamp packaging to figure out how high up I needed to go with this yellow and I'll go ahead and press that down. Now I wish I had turned my card the other way around so that I would have gotten the more organic edge at the top of this. Um, but I wasn't really thinking and so, but I did get pretty much an organic edge at the top of that anyway. So here you can see, I'm just double checking, make sure that I have that in the right place for the pull deck and that transition. This is buff titanium light and I let that dry for just a few seconds and then added some Venetian rose. I'm going to take off a little bit of that Venetian rose and then of course we have the buff titanium under that and I'll use that same handmade stamp to just create a little bit of texture here. It's almost like a stamped concrete texture if you will except for we're going with pink and yellow here. So you can see I have more of a harsh line at the top of the pink. Here I'm pulling off my post-it tape. Never in my life have I ever had post-it tape tear a piece of cardstock or paper, but this was still a little bit wet. So um, I'm just using some collage medium or gel medium to just put that flat back down and you can't even tell that it ever tore. Looks like it never happened. So I decided that I would pick up some of this extra paint left on the gel press. So I'm just gonna kind of pull it off in just small areas and make it a little more distressed at the bottom. It was looking a little too contrived, a little too pre-planned, and I wanted to have more of a distressed look. So I'm just gonna pull it off in sections. Now it still looks like it's pretty, I don't know, it's too perfect, I guess. So I put down a little more of that Naples yellow and I'm just gonna use that as a stamp pad and pull up the acrylic ink and then just stamp it down on the print here. That I'm liking a lot better. We've got more texture at the bottom, looks really nice. So I'm just double checking again my placement and I'll stamp the image with Stays On Midnight Blue ink. This is a solvent ink that's good for non-pore surfaces so it's perfect on top of acrylic paints. 
It dries super fast, so there's little to no chance of it smearing. I'm contemplating whether to just leave it like this or actually to fill in some of these areas and paint it. So I grabbed my Karen Dash Neocolor 2 crayons, and these are water-soluble wax crayons. They work a lot like watercolors. Um, you just use a wet brush and activate them. And I'm finding they're too transparent, which makes sense, right? Because watercolor is transparent. So these aren't really working for me. They weren't giving me the punch that I was going for, and I feel like her legs look more yellow on top of blue, which is exactly what it is. So I just have a baby wipe here and I'm just going to wipe it away. And you can do that because this cardstock is coated with acrylic paint. I'm working on Nina Classic Crest Solar White. It's just a regular cardstock. So I decided that I should paint it with the acrylic paint. I mean, that's a no brainer, you guys, but I have never in my life painted with acrylic paint. So it did not occur to me at all to do that <laughs> at first. So I'm using all the same colors that I used in the actual printing process, and I'm gonna use the um, Buff Titanium Light. I'll mix that with a little bit of the pink, and um, I did my next card with a light skin tone too because I was sticking with the same color palettes, but I should have totally mixed in some Burnt Sienna and given her a warmer skin tone um, to just change things up. So if you're looking for a darker skin tone, Burnt Sienna would be a good color to mix it with. I did find that the acrylic paint was a little thick, especially for that soft brush that I was using. So I, I made sure that I wet my brush and watered it down just a little bit. It also didn't dawn on me until now that you can actually paint light over your dark colors with acrylic paint. So I'm so used to watercolor that everything was looking really flat until I realized that and started adding some highlights back in. So don't forget that you can go dark to light. I'm stamping this sideways to avoid getting paint on my Misty. I highly recommend that you use a stamp positioner and leave your stamp in your Misty until you're done with your card because then you can stamp it again after coloring and bring back those crisp lines that might get obs obscured with your coloring. I love how this turned out. I think it's a super unique look. Let me know if you're going to try acrylic painting on your cards in the comments down below. I will definitely try it again. If you're enjoying this video or learning something new, be sure to give me a like and subscribe down below. So this is that matte paint I was talking about. This is in the color Succulent and it's the folk art line from Plaid. You can get that at Hobby Lobby. It's that green color that I used in the first card. And then this is that same turquoise color that we used. We can't pass up that awesome texture at the bottom of the gel press plate that we used on the first card. So I just covered it up with a little more Naples yellow because that paint was already dry. If your paint is dry, you need to re-wet it with another thin layer of paint before pulling your print. So we'll go ahead and pull this and we'll take a look. Now that black thing that you saw me pull in was a rubbing plate that is just, it's kind of just like a texture plate. And that's what added this rainbow pattern to the background. It basically works as a lift technique. And the pink that you see there was left over from our previous card. And that's one of the things that I love most about the gel press. Here I stamped Uh-Oh from Colorado Craft Company. All of the stamps will be from Colorado Craft Company as this video is part of a blog hop and giveaway. Be sure to leave a comment on my blog. I'll link it in the top right hand corner and also below in the description. And that will enter you in for a chance to win one of their stamp sets from this release. They're giving away eight different stamp sets and you need to leave a comment on each participant's blog. So be sure to check that out below. Here I'm scribbling Karen Dosh Nail Color True Crayons in Prussian Blue, Light Blue, and I'll also add Payne's Gray. And you're probably thinking, why is she using these? She already established that this is not gonna work well. Well, I'm gonna be painting the jeans. And because jeans kind of have stonewashed texture and they're more distressed, I'm totally okay with some of the background coming through. Also because the background is blue and green, so I think that's just gonna add to the texture and the interest of the jeans. So I don't want the jeans to be a flat acrylic kind of look. Do you know what I mean? So what's really interesting about this is because I use that matte acrylic paint, these Karen Dosh crayons react completely differently to that than they do if you just use it over regular acrylic paint that has maybe like a semi-gloss to it. Um, it actually absorbs into the matte paint a little bit. So you get a different finish and a different look. So if you have different types of finishes for your acrylic paints, it's definitely worth experimenting with it and seeing how your other mediums react with it differently. 
So you can see I'm just kind of putting some color down. Now I've wet my brush and kind of cleaned off the majority of the pigment. I'm just gonna wash out some of those edges and I'll keep adding the color until I get the texture and the contrast and interest that I want. The last time I hopped along with Colorado Craft Company, I also did some gel press cards um, for the Anita Duran release. And I got such wonderful feedback from you guys. And I hope that you guys enjoy these cards too. This would be really fun on slimline cards as well because you have all that space to create creative with. Head over to my Instagram page at Notable Ink because I'm going to be giving away this stamp set called Birthday Blessings on my Instagram account. Gel press printing has really become one of my favorite techniques and I created a technique, well I guess I didn't create the technique but I coined the term for it, gel tangle where you combine gel press printing and zentangle and I started an art journal series on those so I'll link my gel printing playlist up above as well. I hear so often from people that they have a gel press but they're too scared to use it and I was the same way. I had mine for almost a year before I actually started using it and hopefully this gives you some inspiration to get started with the techniques. I used the Neocolor crayon for the ice cream cone but for the ice cream in her skin I ended up using the acrylic paint to make sure that none of that green background showed through and I love the texture on this card. So I'm gonna super speed up some of the rest of this gel press printing. That was another rubbing plate in a different design. And I'm gonna skip over some of the panels that I don't end up using because otherwise this video would just end up being way too long. So I decided to move on to some brighter colors to accommodate this stamp set. And this is a big and bold stamp set called Color My World. And I'm loving these different size brushes. I think they're so awesome. These would be beautiful to watercolor. And here I'm just trying to figure out where to put my sentiment. I had intended when I was making the gel print to run the sentiment across the top. That's why I have all that white space up, up there. But I decided I wanted the brush tips up there instead. So I just ran it sideways as well. And I think that works. There's nothing wrong with being untraditional with your cards. You just gotta love this build a rainbow stamp set. This time I'm gonna mix the blue and the green paint just right on the gel press and I'm just cleaning off my brayer on a piece of deli paper off to the side. Here I've loaded up all of the stamps on this large acrylic block. You can see that I've already used the stamp set with um, some stays on ink that have stained it but it still works perfectly fine. I've done a lift technique with the rainbows and I wanna dry this paint so that I can um, put on my white paint here without smearing any of the wet paint. I wanna make sure those rainbows stay intact. I'm gonna do a full print with this and I'll just use the deli paper so I don't get too much paint on my hands, although you can see I've already got it all over the place. And we'll go ahead and pull this print. And this print is gorgeous, you guys. It's so subtle, but look how beautiful this green paint causes this just really subtle distress look with the ocean green. I love it. Now here I have the sharp edge from the card panel. So I'm just using a wet baby wipe and I'm just gonna kind of pull up some of the paint on those edges. I'm gonna use this extra paint that's on here cause it's beautiful. I don't wanna get rid of it, but I don't want those sharp lines on there. So just go ahead and lift those off with a baby wipe. And then I'm kicking up the vibrancy here. This is quinacridone rose. So this is a super bright pink. It's gorgeous. I love it. When you're using your gel press, you want to use thin layers of paint if you're using smooth cardstock. If you are using a textured cardstock, then I'd recommend maybe using a little bit more paint. Otherwise, it won't get into those nooks and crannies like watercolor paper or mixed media paper. If it's got a texture, you may need a little more paint. But otherwise, I would say use a really thin layer of paint. It dries faster. And thin layers of paint work particularly well if you want to do multiple layers of paint on the gel press before you pull the print. So kind of doing multiple layers in one pull. Um, thin layers of paint are gonna work best for you. So here I have some white and blue and I wanna make sure that I don't completely mix this. I wanna see some delineation between the white and blue. So I'm just gently rolling over it. I'm lifting my brayer between each stroke, but I wanna keep some of those little oval shapes there. And then we'll go ahead and pull our print. 
I'm gonna do edge to edge. Otherwise, if you wanted to have some white at the top and the bottom, you can turn this 90 degrees and go up and down um, on the gel press and that'll leave you some white at the top and the bottom or just the top. You can shift it up and, and just have white on one edge. Look how pretty this is. So we've got a little bit of the green left over. It's kind of making a little bit of a yellow, super distressed. And I used a sentiment and the hearts from that same stamp set. Look at the texture on that, you guys. For the next card, I used a sentiment from the Thinking of You stamp set. And I love that big and bold sentiment. I had a blast creating gel prints for these scene cards. And I hope that you did too. Stay tuned and make sure you subscribe and like down below. Kick on those notifications so that you don't miss any new content from me. Thanks so much for joining me today and leave a comment on my blog to enter for that chance to win one of these stamp sets. Mm -hmm.